Extending humanity to other worlds in the solar system is at the very limits of our modern technology. And unless there are some dramatic discoveries in new propulsion systems, or we learn how to build everything out of carbon nanotubes, the future of space exploration is going to require living off the land. The technique is known as in situ resource utilization or ISRU, and it means supplying as much of your mission from local resources as possible. And many of our future exploration destinations like Mars have a lot to work with. Let's look at the raw materials on Mars that missions can use to live off the land and the techniques and technologies that will need to be developed to make this possible. Although the moon is close, Mars is generally considered a better destination for the long term settlement beyond Earth. It has a lot of downsides, 38% gravity, very little radiation protection, almost no atmospheric pressure, brutally cold temperatures, and a fraction of the sunlight we get on Earth. A lot of downsides, but when it comes to raw materials, Mars has a lot to work with. In a 2016 paper by Robert W. Moses and Dennis M. Bushnell from NASA's Langley Research Center, they provided the most detailed analysis I've ever seen. It's called Frontier in Situ Resource Utilization for Enabling Sustained Human Presence on Mars. For starters, let's look at what Mars has to offer. One of the most important resources is going to be water. Scientists knew about the huge reserves of water ice at the Martian poles, enough to create vast oceans on Mars if it all melted, but that water is far away from the warmer equatorial regions that humans would want to live. There isn't much water in the atmosphere, and in his original Mars Direct plan, Dr. Robert Zubrin proposed bringing hydrogen from Earth to react with oxygen on Mars to create water. But more recently, several spacecraft have discovered evidence of vast reserves located farther away from the poles. In 2018, NASA reported that their Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter had found evidence of a layer of water ice just under the surface at more central latitudes. It's now believed that the Martian regolith contains 3 to 8% water at the equator and 40% at 60 degrees latitude, so there's plenty of water. Oxygen is another necessary element, and it's abundant in both the carbon dioxide atmosphere as well as locked up in the regolith with other elements. Just adding water to the regolith might release oxygen. Carbon can be pulled from the atmospheric carbon dioxide. With hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and water, you actually have the most critical supplies humans will need, and you can make some surprising recipes with those raw materials such as methane fuel, various kinds of plastics, and of course, air to breathe and water to drink. But Mars has more at its disposal. Analysis from space and from rovers on the surface have revealed other elements in the Martian regolith. Ancient volcanoes on Mars will have concentrated minerals so they can be mined. Iron is common on Mars and it gives its red hue. But other interesting minerals have been discovered with curiosity, like gypsum, which contains calcium and sulfur. Deposits of gerocyte have been seen from space, which provides potassium. NASA's Opportunity rover found the greenish hue of copper containing minerals at El Capitan, like anlerite or malachite. Just this year, NASA announced the discovery of olivine, a mineral typically found inside planets and was probably blasted onto the surface of Mars in a volcanic explosion. And this material is rich in magnesium. Martian meteorites found on Earth have contained additional elements like aluminum, titanium, and chromium, which means that these metals are common in the regolith on Mars. And trace amounts of lithium, cobalt, nickel, zinc, niobium, molybdenum, lanthium, europium, tungsten, and gold have also been found in these meteorites. In a 2013 paper, geologists proposed that early Mars might have actually released phosphorus through water rock interactions at a rate 45 times higher than Earth, and phosphorus is going to be critical in growing plants on Mars. We've mentioned several times that there are perchlorites on Mars mixed in with the top layer of the regolith, so there's your chlorine. One of Curiosity's instruments called the Sample Analysis at Mars, or SAM, has studied the Martian atmosphere and found trace amounts of nitrogen, xenon, and krypton, which indicate that there are other elements bound up with them in the regolith, like bromine and barium. In 2016, Curiosity discovered boron and sodium in a mineral vein, and in the same year, 
it found manganese oxide rocks in another spot. When NASA's Viking landers arrived on Mars in 1976, they took samples of the regolith and they found they contained 40% silicon dioxide, which is the main ingredient in glass. Pretty much all the basic elements humans will need, all the chemicals for life, fuel and materials are present on Mars, which isn't that surprising since it's a planet like Earth and it formed out of the same solar nebula. One final raw material is metal meteorites, which are scattered across the landscapes on Mars. These were discovered by spirit, opportunity, and curiosity, and every one of these chunks of space metal contains nickel, iron, and many rare elements like ruthenium, which could be used as a catalyst for methane production. The question is, what are we going to do with all of it? What can we build? What techniques and chemistry will we need to master? And we'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank David J. Mark, Ed, Ocean and Dylan McIntyre, and the rest of our 834 patrons for their generous support. Thanks to the support of our patrons, we're able to create even more content. For the last two months, we've released 22 new videos on this channel, as well as regular episodes of the Weekly Space Hangout and Astronomy Cast. And these are freely available to anyone on the internet without any lengthy sponsorships or a paywall. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today, and I'll remove all the ads from universe today for you forever, even if you stop being a patron in the future. Okay, now we know what all the raw materials are. Let's start putting them together in ways that support humans on Mars, from the first explorers to permanent settlers. In order to extract water from the regolith on Mars, you just need to heat it up, vaporize the water and then capture it. The first explorers could set up solar tents that trap heat in an area and then collect the water that vaporizes out of it. Rovers could be equipped with microwave devices that heat and vaporize the water trapped in the ground directly beneath it. This could be captured on board the rover and then transferred back to the factory. Regolith could also be dug up by earth moving equipment and then baked in solar ovens to extract every last drop of water. Carbon dioxide is pumped in from the atmosphere and then cooled down to the point that it freezes. Dr. Robert Zubrin has demonstrated a technology called the Mars Atmosphere Carbon Dioxide Freezer, which could produce about 300 grams of carbon dioxide using 400 watts of power. One of the most useful chemicals we can make on Mars is going to be methane, which is carbon and hydrogen. The technique for creating methane is well understood and was discovered over 100 years ago by the French chemist Paul Sabatier. Mix together carbon dioxide and hydrogen with a catalyst like nickel or ruthenium and you can produce methane and water. This process also releases heat which will be helpful on frigid Mars. Methane can be used as a rocket fuel, but it can also serve as a chemical store of energy without requiring complex and heavy batteries. Once you have all these raw materials, you need to prevent them from freezing so they don't crack or break pipes in containers. One strategy is to use the toxic perchlorates and the regolith as a type of antifreeze. You're already going to be washing this stuff out of the soil that you want to use for growing food. You can also turn the chemicals into hydrates. With hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, you can make plastics using a process called the reverse water gas shift reaction. Hydrogen and carbon dioxide are combined to create water and carbon monoxide, which is then passed through an iron-based catalyst to create ethylene. This can be used as fuel, but it's also the basis for a wide range of plastics that can make up clothing, building materials, insulation, adhesives, paints, and much, much more. Various plastics can be turned into feedstocks for 3D printers, which can then make anything from replacement plastic parts to fabrics to large-scale trusses and structures. There are many techniques to extract metals from the regolith, but one of the simplest might be using bacteria. A researcher from the Delft University of Technology recently developed a system that uses a bacteria-filled bioreactor. The bacteria converts regolith into magnetite, which can then be extracted with magnets. Made in Space has already demonstrated 3D printing on the International Space Station, and their upcoming Vulcan system will 3D print parts out of aerospace-grade metals like titanium and aluminum, as well as high-grade polymers and hybrid components with multiple materials. Designers and engineers on Earth can email designs to the Martian 3D printers and help them fix and maintain their equipment, and even take advantage of new materials discoveries back on Earth. 
We've done a whole episode on feeding humans on Mars and how you can support a population of a million settlers so they can become self-sufficient. Plants can grow in the regolith once you remove the perchlorates and add fertilizer. Hydroponic and aquaponic methods should work even better supplying Mars explorers and settlers with fresh vegetables and lots of potatoes. Large scale structures could be built on Mars out of the regolith. With a high pressure hammer, you can just compress regolith into bricks and other shapes which are stronger than steel reinforced concrete. No baking, adhesives, or liquids required. At NASA's Swampworks, various Martian loaders, excavators, and dump trucks are in testing to see what's the best way to transfer the most regolith for use in construction. Just piling it up on top of a rigid base provides protection from radiation and allows better management of temperature. But to make more complicated structures out of regolith, settlers will use giant 3D printers which will build living areas layer by layer. NASA recently held a competition awarding a total of $100,000 to three teams that designed 3D printed habitats on Mars. Team Search Apis Corp developed multi-stage towers which can be reinforced as they get taller and taller. Porthole windows allow lots of light to enter the buildings. Team Zophorus developed habitats which would be constructed by an autonomous roving printer to build individual structures and then moves on to new buildings. And Mars Incubator created this cool design that looks like various spherical shaped buildings attached together, providing maximum strength with the minimum amount of materials. It's still early days, but it really looks like all the raw materials humanity will need to survive on Mars is there on the red planet. Some of it, like the regolith, will be easier to get at, while others will require more complicated techniques and technologies to make it useful. This will happen in stages as more and more infrastructure is sent to Mars, providing economies of scale that will really get things rolling. Over time, as these techniques are put to the test and settlers are supported with the collective imagination and experience of engineers back on Earth, humanity will have what it needs to explore and maybe even settle the red planet. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here and support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus materials like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. I talked about the raw materials settlers will have on Mars, but what about growing enough food to live? We did a whole video about what it's going to take to feed a city of a million people on Mars. And you can watch that now.